Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be learning about Crohn's disease. This is part of the video on inflammatory bowel disease, but just focusing on Crohn's disease. I hope you enjoy. So now let's talk about Crohn's disease. So this is an inflammatory bowel disease that affects any portion of the GI tract. So literally from mouth to anus, it's any part of the GI tract. However, it usually will affect the terminal ileum and the colon, and it will rarely involve the rectum. So there will be rectal sparing. So Crohn's can affect one small area of the gut or multiple areas with normal bowel in between. This is called skip lesions. So here in this image, we can see, uh, it even shows a little bit of rectal sparing there, but we can see areas of the bowel that are uh, in affected by the disease, so here for example, and then areas of normal bowel, then affected bowel, normal bowel, and so on. So this is characteristic of Crohn's disease, these skip lesions. In terms of uh, gross morphology, we will have transmural inflammation, meaning all the layers of the colon will be affected by Crohn's disease. So this is important. Transmural inflammation uh, can lead to fistulas. So a fistula is an abnormal connection between body parts. Uh, essentially, because you have transmural inflammation, um, this can um, spread through the wall of the intestine into an other part, let's say of the intestine, as we can see in this image, creating an abnormal connection between these two loops of small, small bowel or as we can see here, between the small bowel and the large colon. And this can actually happen between any part of your body that comes in contact, contact with the GI tract, really. So we can have an enterocutaneous fistula. This is a connection between your bowel and your skin. So there can be a, an opening to the outside environment, uh, which can be very dangerous. Uh, there can be an anorectal fistula. These tend to be quite common. Entrovesical fistula. This is a connection between the bowel and the bladder. So you can have a, a situation where a patient is essentially peeing uh, feces. Here uh, in this image is just to uh, show again the skip lesions, skip lesions in uh, the bowel uh, seen in Crohn's disease. Another characteristic finding of Crohn's disease is a cobblestone mucosa. Essentially, because we have deep ulcers uh, due to that transmural inflammation, um, you're going to see these deep ulcers and fissures that will produce a cobblestone appearance in the bowel. So you're going to have essentially fissures uh, and deep ulcers in areas of more raised bowel. So it end up, ends up looking like a cobblestone. Um, here we can see as well what that is meant to look like. So a cobblestone appearance inside there. The large bowel. Another thing we see is creeping fat and bowel wall thickening. So here as you can see in comparison to a normal bowel in Crohn's disease the affected area will be will have very thick walls and uh, creeping fat essentially there will be more fat around the bowel uh, surrounding it. Now the bowel wall thickening leads to the string sign on barium swallow. So here we have an image, um, essentially a patient swallows a, a barium solution, uh, it will allow for contrast on imaging, and uh, we can see these strings, it literally looks like uh, strings because these areas of affected bowel will have a thicker wall, meaning um, not so much space there uh, for bowel contents to be, and it ended up looking like strings. Now for the microscopic morphology of Crohn's disease, we will see non-caseating granulomas and lymphoid aggregates usually located in the mucosa and submucosa. So essentially a non-caseating granuloma means there is no central necrosis inside the granuloma. And we can see this here in the center, there are uh, many uh, white cells still, so there's no necrosis in the center. This is just a, an image of a granuloma and essentially, Crohn's disease is a T helper 1 mediated immune response, meaning it is a cell mediated response. 
So cells are going to be recruiting more cells and trying to wall off the, the source of inflammation uh, and essentially form this granuloma. Some of the signs and symptoms more particular to Crohn's disease include diarrhea that may or may not be bloody and it's often mixed with mucus. So in ulcerative colitis, it's very common to have bloody diarrhea, but in Crohn's disease, it's not as common. So there will be varying degrees of abdominal pain depending on the severity of the disease, but a right lower quadrant pain is common. So like we talked before, um, Crohn's disease often affects the terminal ileum, and the terminal ileum sits around there uh, where it connects to the cecum, which is right where the right lower quadrant uh, covers. So you will see right lower quadrant pain quite commonly with Crohn's disease. There will be weight loss, fever, and tiredness. So now for the extraintestinal manifestations of Crohn's disease. Uh, here first we have the extraintestinal manifestations common to inflammatory bowel disease, so to both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So erythema nodosum, pyoderma, gangrenosum, and uh, aptus ulcers in the der dermatological side of things. Ocular consequences, we have the episcleritis and uveitis, MSK, migratory polyarthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. Now, the more, the more particular uh, manifestations to Crohn's disease will include kidney stones and gallstones. So essentially, in Crohn's disease, we're going to see fat malabsorption because of that small bowel involvement. And so fat that will be in your bowel will bind to calcium. It's in a process called saponification. And this means that oxalate will be free to be absorbed because usually calcium binds to oxalate forming calcium oxalate. Um, but if this doesn't happen, oxalate is free to be absorbed. There will be an increase in the oxalate levels in your body essentially leading to the formation of calcium oxalate stones in your kidneys. We have an image of a kidney full of stones. Next, uh, gallstones are commonly seen in patients with Crohn's disease because of that terminal ileum involvement. So if the ter terminal ileum is uh, inflamed, there will be a malabsorption of bile salts. And then an imbalance of bile salts in the gallbladder, essentially, leads to an increased risk of developing gallstones. So just a quick summary for what we talked about in Crohn's disease. You're going to have inflammation anywhere in the GI tract, so from mouth to anus. You're going to have skip lesions, so patches of inflammation in between uh, healthy portions of bowel. The pain is typically in the right lower quadrant due to that uh, terminal ileum involvement. You're going to have transmural inflammation which can lead to fistulas it is a t helper one mediated immune response uh, which essentially leads to the formation of non-caseating granulomas uh, the bowel will have creeping fat a cobblestone mucosa and rectal sparing and then stones are more common in crohn's so you're going to have gallstones and renal stones so this is it for Crohn's disease. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more.